So, Martin, the CEO of the Commonwealth Bank today said he's very confident his customers with mortgages have the ability to make mortgage repayments in a slightly higher interest rate environment. So if we can step through this, first of all, you survey a 1,000 households a month on their financial situations. What's the picture you've gleaned? It's actually a 1,000 a week, so we have 4,500 in a month. And uh, we ask them a lot of questions about their financial profile, money coming in, money going out. And uh, my observation is that uh, whilst there are some households who are very comfortable and will be able to handle any rate rises, no problem at all, there are many households that are already very close to the edge and even a small rise in interest rates would translate into significant pain. So I think you can't take an average view, you need to go granular. So that's the issue, is that the bank is giving an overall sort of average view, but you're looking at the detail. Well, I think that's right. And of course, um, banks will want to portray things very positively. So they always say, well, people are paying their mortgage ahead, et cetera, et cetera. And some are. But we also know that around 30% of households have no real savings and are struggling just to meet uh, you know, requirements to pay as my, uh, demand comes due. So, yeah, the truth is, I think, a lot more complex than perhaps the simplistic one-liners. So even before we see interest rate rises, what does it look like for those households and how many of them are there who are starting to struggle a bit? Well, I measure uh, mortgage stress in terms of money in, money out. In other words, how much money is coming into a household each week and how much is going out and how much of that goes to pay the mortgage. And uh, basically at the moment, we've got about 41% of households with a mortgage who are struggling to make those repayments on the mortgage and everything else. Now, they will tend to prioritise the mortgage over other types of expenditure, which is an interesting observation in itself because, of course, they want to keep the house and, you know, that's where they live. Um, that translates to around one and a half million households across the country at the moment that are really quite close to the edge. And, you know, even small increases in interest rates would be a problem. Many of them, of course, are already experiencing very strong price pressure simply because inflation is quite strong costs of everyday items uh, you know food and what have you is going up they also got another issue insofar that often they're not earning what they wanted to earn and needed to earn to be able to actually service the mortgage because many people still don't have as many hours as they'd like so it's a complex dynamic but you know there's one and a half million already close to the edge so why are people who are in that situation uh, sitting there with mortgages that they can't afford to pay? I mean, how did they get into this position? Well, there's a couple of observations. The first is the way that a bank assesses a household's ability to afford a mortgage is based on a relatively simplistic set of algorithms that doesn't necessarily reflect the truth of how borrowers actually are. And, you know, the banks will make some assumptions about how much you can cut back on other things and all of those uh, various th dimensions. In fact, um, to be honest, the expenditure side of the uh, uh, ledger, as it were, that the banks um, discuss with borrowers is pretty weak even now. The income side, a little bit less of a problem, but of course incomes sometimes change. So, for example, if people suddenly find that they can't work because of illness or because of you know, the virus, those sorts of things. Um, so what tends to happen is that the banks come in with a fairly standard approach. The borrower will assume that the bank's done significant due diligence so they are comfortable that the borrower can actually afford to repay and therefore they quite often don't do any further work themselves they don't build their own cash flows they don't think about what happens if you know my partner gets ill or if um, food prices go up or if interest rates go up so often people are actually lured into the market and the lure at the moment is based on really low interest rates so they can get big mortgages and also of course the expectation that uh, house prices will only ever go up and unfortunately that isn't necessarily true i would say that house prices are very close to their peaks at the moment so we've had a whole bunch of people brought forward into the market and by the way the government of course through its various schemes um, you know the f first time buyer programs, the home builder schemes, uh, that's pulled more people through too. I think the government said around 300,000 households have been pulled forward into the market because of their schemes. So we have quite a few people who've come into the market with an expectation that everything will be fine, but sometimes, frankly, it's a bit shaky. 
Now, interest rates. The suggestion is that the markets have already banked a 2% rise this year, but the Reserve Bank and the federal government are being much more conservative than that. What do you foresee? Well, yeah, certainly the markets are saying rates will go up quite strongly. Of course, that's reflecting moves in the US with the Federal Reserve. The UK put rates up recently as well. And so the international scene and the money markets are all saying rates will go up very strongly. The Reserve Bank is resisting that. And there's a couple of reasons. One, one of course, they were saying, well, it won't go up till 2024. So they're having to pedal that back and bring it and bring it forward. But the other point, they know that if rates do start to rise, that will put pressure on households. But it will also put the pressure on the banks because effectively their mortgage books, and remember that most of the big banks here are really big building societies, they're predominantly mortgage lenders, means that they could get into difficulty too. So there are some reasons why the Reserve Bank might want to be a little bit more coy. However, I personally think that they're going to have to move rates up and I would expect to see rates going up certainly in the second half of this year. And between 1% or 2% is probably over the next 12 months what we're going to see. It could be more, though, if the Fed moves fast and hard and if uh, rates around the world continue to, uh, to move up and inflation still um, continues to go higher. Yeah, I mean, we, we can't uh, ignore the fact that we work in a global economy. So, um, and house, house prices falling. I mean, there are forecasts around that too. NAB, I think, put out a forecast uh, late last week that house prices will start falling this year and be down 11% next year. Um, again, your crystal ball, please. <laughs> yes, well, you know, you can't just talk generically about all house prices, right? Because units and houses are going in different directions. Many units are already lower now. So, for example, if I take North Ride just out, out of Sydney, prices there are still lower than they were in 2017s for high-rise apartments. So there's been very little momentum and po positive there. If you look at houses, they've been very strong. If you look at regional areas, they've been strong. Nevertheless, the relationship between the flow of credit and house prices is very strong. So if credit starts to get a bit tighter because interest rates rise and the number of listings continues to rise, as it looks as though it will, because some people are being frankly forced to put their properties on the market now, we're going to find that there's more property coming on the market in a higher interest rate environment, prices will fall. My own view is that I think a 10% fall on average is certainly with on the cards over the next year or so. It could be somewhat more, but then it's directly connected to how high will rates go. If you take the 2% model that the markets are suggesting, then it might be even as much as 20%. Now, in terms of the situation people find themselves in when they get close to the edge, the banks must be aware of this too. So, you know, beyond those overarching statements such as the one Matt Common made today, how are they actually managing the mortgagees on their books who are at risk? Well, firstly, they do have an obligation. So if a household is in financial difficulty, the banks are required legally to try and provide some options. And so they do do that. And so, for example, in some cases, they might restructure the mortgage to make it longer. We are seeing some 35-year duration mortgages now, which sort of helps, or even interest only. Now, that may help, but often it doesn't. Uh, but there is also another um, scheme which we see quite often, and that is the bank starts to talk to the borrower about, look, your financial system situation appears to have permanently changed. You probably should consider selling the property before you get into really deep financial difficulty because we can't necessarily help you to refinance and, you know, find an alternative structure. And those sort of whispery conversations, which means that the bank never has to declare the loan as default, is definitely going on at the moment, particularly in the high-rise sector, particularly among some property investors, but also now some recent first-time buyers too. So there is this sort of quiet um, theme going on where the banks are starting to put pressure on some households to just sell up. And by the way, because prices are quite strong at the moment, if they sell up now, they can probably repay the mortgage, which means the bank is then cleared. And uh, the only problem, of course, is then that that uh, particular household will probably need to rent rather than own a property. And rent, renting is difficult too, um, a whole separate conversation. So if you had to sort of encapsulate where we are at in terms of mortgage stress or people getting close to that in the current environment, I mean, what are we looking at? Are we looking at people, you know, th tens of thousands of Australians getting into strife potentially? Well, I run sen sensitivities on different interest rate movements from where we are. So let's say rates did go up that 2% that we're talking about. Over that period of time, we would see another 250,000 households potentially falling into the mortgage stress 
bucket. In other words, they don't have enough money to be able to uh, manage all of their uh, financial affairs appropriately. Now, they may be able to grab savings if they've got it, or you know, if they've got lots of properties, they can sell a property. Uh, they sometimes reach for payday loans or even buy now, pay later, uh, or indeed um, put more on credit cards. But ultimately, the only way to solve the problem is to either restructure, if they can, or indeed sell. And my point about mortgage stress is it's a leading indicator of financial pressure on households, but it also translates also to social pressure as well. So we see quite a strong correlation between high levels of mortgage stress and even things like um, family violence and all of those rather uh, uncomfortable issues too, and even high levels of crime. And if you look around, you can see particular suburbs where the seeds have already been laid. So, for example, in the high-growth suburbs, a lot of homeland packages over the last few years where people have large mortgages are very close to the edge. We're also seeing a lot of high-rise pressure in some areas too. And even some older Australians, perhaps in their 50s and 60s, who were expecting to pretty much have paid off their mortgage by now, suddenly find that they've still got the mortgage and their income's drying up. So there are hotspots, both in terms of types of property some locations and some types of people where this could actually get quite nasty. All very difficult in an election year, Martin North. Thank you very much for joining us. Good to talk to you.